Hi, if you're in the habit of using a tumble dryer like this after you've done your washing, then you probably know by now that it can be quite expensive to operate, depending on the type of tumble dryer that you've got, especially this time of year, because you can't hang your clothes outside on the washing line. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 alternative ways of drying your clothes, or if you have to use your tumble dryer, then I've got some tips for you as well. Just before I start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. Number one on the list, and I suppose it's a really simple option, it's using one of these, a clothes airer. Uh, it's something that people have been using for decades. Uh, it's a really simple option, and clearly the advantage of just hanging everything out onto a clothes airer is that it will dry naturally. Uh, clearly the advantage of using something like a clothes airer compared to your tumble dryer is that uh, as long as you space everything out properly, then it can dry naturally. Uh, there are certain things that are always better finished in a tumble dryer, things like towels. Uh, if you're just going to hang them like this, uh, then although it will take a lot longer to dry, and that's one downside of the clothes era, uh, that uh, again, some things might be a little bit hard. So things like towels or some t-shirts are not quite as nice as when they're finished in the tumble dryer. What I tend to do at home, because this is mine, I bought it in today into work, uh, I actually use the clothes area to put all the clothes on and I'll leave them for a bit to get rid of the majority of the moisture and then I'll finish them in the tumble dryer. Now that's, it's almost a good, a really good compromise and I found it really works because everything is almost dry. Uh, it's almost just damp to the touch. Uh, so I've got rid of the majority of the moisture uh, on the clothes area and then I'll finish everything off in the dryer. So it's a good compromise of everything drying uh, naturally, uh, but then I'm finishing the stuff off in the tumble dryer, but it's not in the tumble dryer for long, it's probably 15-20 minutes. Uh, but again, that's a much better way of drying my clothes. An alternative to this kind of error is a heated error. Now basically it's, it's a very similar layout to this, uh, it's a lot sturdier than this kind of error, uh, but the main advantage of a heated area, clearly you're going to plug it in and it generates heat around the area, and you just hang your clothes on it exactly like this. And the main advantage is that it will dry the clothes a lot quicker than this kind of error. Now, when I say quicker, a lot of people, especially if you've got a big family, you don't have the luxury of just being able to pop your clothes on here, leaving them for a day or so to dry naturally, and then put them away or ironing them. Some people, if you're doing one or two loads a day, if you've got quite a big family, then that can be, um, I suppose, a real downside to this. Uh, a lot of people want quicker washes on the washing machines, they want quicker drying programs on the tumble dryers like this. So this kind of concept wouldn't really work. But if you had a heated area where it's going to dry the clothes a lot quicker, then that could be a good alternative. Number two on the list, and unfortunately I've not got one here to show you, is something called a dry buddy. And this is a, it's not this, that's just a brand. Uh, but the idea is, it's actually, it's like a self-contained, it's almost like a cabinet that you can put your clothes in and then it generates heat within there. So you just normally hang them up on hangers uh, put your clothes in and I must say we don't tend to see many in this industry it's not really something we come across uh, but again I have seen some reviews on them they can be quite efficient uh, I haven't actually tried one so I've not spoke to anyone that's actually used one uh, but that kind of idea uh, I suppose the idea is they they can be a similar size to a washing machine and they're a bit taller so space wise they're not that great uh, but that could be an alternative to using a tumble dryer. The main advantage of something like a, a dry buddy or alternative models uh, is that you've actually, you, because you can hang your shirts up in there, then they're, they're not going to be creased at all. And that could be a good uh, way of saving having to iron them as well. Number three, and this is something that's talked about a lot recently, especially within the UK when it comes to saving money on drying, and that's using a dehumidifier to dry your clothes. Now, dehumidifiers at the moment are, are really big. Uh, the market has always been quite big, especially within the UK. Uh, but what people are doing is they find alternative ways to dry. And using a dehumidifier, the main advantage, and I suppose what it does, is it removes moisture from within the air. Uh, now, where I am at the moment in the conservatory, as I just mentioned earlier, um, it gets really moist in there. And what I try and do is I try and have a dehumidifier on low all the time and you'd be amazed how much water it, it extracts from the air and that's a similar concept to using it when you want to dry your clothes and what I tend to do sometimes is I will actually put the dehumidifier in front of the clothes area 
and that's a really good way because all the clothes are spread out and all I do is I sit it probably a, a meter or a couple of meters away and again you'd be amazed how much water is extracted into or extracted from the air into the, the tank of the dehumidifier uh, now this is a much more energy efficient way so dehumidifiers cost pence to run per hour um, a lot of them have something called laundry mode so what it would do is it it doesn't although it has sensors built in uh, using the laundry mode is a much better way of drying the clothes because it's just a constant uh, almost extraction of the moisture within the air and you will find uh, depending on how di that's dirty it's not dirty is it depending on how wet the clothes are then you can find it will dry it no, probably not as quick as using a tumble dryer, but you're not far off. Number four, use your radiators in your house. Uh, now, some people will go and hang items over your radiator. That's probably not recommended too much, because uh, clearly that's going to reduce the amount of heat that you get into the room from the radiator. Uh, but there are certain racks that you can get. So you've got little, almost like drying racks, where you can hang them over a radiator and then pop some clothes at the front. You've got the heat being generated from the radiator anyway. Why not use it to dry some of your clothes? Number five, it's a little bit of a simple one, this. Towel dry some of your clothes. When you take some items out of your washing machine, just get a dry towel, uh, pop the clothes on there, and just um, almost dry them using a towel to extract some of the moisture from them. And again, you will find that that can make a difference to the, I suppose, the speed of the drying process especially if you're going to put them on an error. Number six, again, it's a little bit of an alternative way. If you are using something like a clothes error, put a normal desk fan in front of it. So it's not necessarily a heating fan, just put a desk fan in front of it and put it on, say, a medium setting. It doesn't have to be the quicker setting. Because what you will find, by circulating the air around all the clothes, and you might just need to turn the air around after an hour or so, uh, that can really help with the drying process. Don't forget, when you put the clothes outside, uh, when you've got the wind blowing, that's clearly going to help the drying process. I know normally when you put things outside, it's a lot warmer than at the moment, especially in the UK. When I'm recording this, because I'm recording this, it's, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. And at the moment, the temperature outside is about minus 3, so it is freezing cold. Number 7, another tip on reducing the time of drying is on your washing machine, have a look at the spin settings that you're using. Now, for some people, uh, they tend to use standard programs and if it's a 1400 spin washing machine then some of the programs that you select might be a lower spin speed. Uh, that's something I always check. So if you've got a, a high spin speed machine have a look to make sure that it is the maximum spin that you can operate on. Also what you can find is when you finish the program just put it on an extra spin because sometimes the, the program won't spin at the highest spin speed for very long. It will get up to the 1400 if it's a 1400 spin machine, but it will reduce very quickly. Whereas if you put it on an extra spin at the end of the program, which again doesn't cost a huge amount to do because there's no heating involved, uh, but what you can find is that can extract a lot more water out of the clothes. And again, if you extract more water out of the clothes to start with, then it just means that the whole drying process will be a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. Also, there are things like spin dryers available uh, it's not really something we see a huge amount, although we do still sell them. And what that would do is it, it's only, it's quite a small device. Uh, not many brands make these now, but essentially what a spin dryer will do is it will spin at around 2,800 RPM. So again, it's a lot quicker. It will extract a lot more moisture and water out the clothes, which again, speeds up the drying process. Number eight, again, this is a tip when using your washing machine. Don't overload your washer. Now, when it comes to washing, I know it's always tempting, you've got all your washing there, you've not got long to do it, and you've got probably a, a shirt or a blouse left, and you think, oh, okay, let's just cram it in. The main downside is that if you have too much in there, then it won't spin to its full extraction rate. Uh, you're not gonna get the best performance out of it. And that's really, a, I suppose, something we try and say to a lot of customers, that when it comes to loading the washing machine, what you should be able to do is when you put all the clothes in, you should be able to put your hand in like that on top of the clothes and then you've got the door there. So ideally, you don't really want the washer more than about two thirds full. Also, the other side of the coin is not to underload the machine. 
And what I mean by that is that a lot of modern washing machines have a like a balanced spin control uh, so that it will detect that if it can't balance the load out, then it won't spin to its full spin speed. Now, uh, some people are trying to put one large item in, say a duvet cover or uh, say a pillow cover or a couple of flannels, things like that, and there's not enough in there to balance the load out in the machine. So that's something that is quite common with customers, especially when they're having a new machine and if they've had an old machine for a long time, where that kind of technology wasn't around, say, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, so really what you need to do is you need to put a half-decent load in there to allow the machine to uh, balance the load out and then it can spin to its full capacity. Now, number nine, if you really get to the stage that you've tried all these different things uh, and you just found that either it's not quick enough to dry or it, some things just don't work for you and if you have to resort to using a tumble dryer, then I suppose a tip when using your dryer, try and dry four loads each time. Uh, if you're going to put lots of small loads in there, then they can be quite a bit more expensive to run. And a lot of modern tumble dryers have something called sensor dryer built in. And essentially what that will do, that is a sensor that's built into the tumble dryer and it will detect how dry the clothes are. And depending on the level that you've set will depend on how long it takes. Uh, now, for some people, you want things to be, say, iron dry, where it's just left slightly damp, if you want to take things out to dry them, uh, and then to iron them. Uh, then you've got other things like cupboard dry, where it's ready to take out, and just to pop into a cupboard. Uh, or things like cupboard dry plus, that's really where it's ready to take out, and just to store away if you would want to fold it up. And what I was getting at is that the whole sensor drying process within the program and the tumble dryer can take around 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and if you can reduce the number of drying loads that you do, essentially putting a much bigger load in, then again, that's going to save you money in the long run. Number 10, and the final thing when it comes to trying to save money when using a dryer, is if you are going to buy a tumble dryer, try and go for something called a heat pump tumble dryer. Now, heat pump tumble dryers use less than half electricity of a standard condenser dryer or a vented tumble dryer. Now, heat pump has a huge number of advantages and disadvantages. I'm not saying they are perfect by any means. Uh, the main advantage is that they are a lot more efficient to run, so they cost a lot less. I suppose the main downsides to a heat pump tumble dryer are that they cost a lot more to buy, so the, the price to initially buy it can be more expensive. Not as much as it used to be. Uh, the price gap between heat pump and a condenser dryer has come down a lot. Uh, some brands that we deal with, you're only looking around £50 difference. So for some people, it's a no-brainer. The other downside of a heat pump tumble dryer is that it can vary a huge amount. The drying times of each program can vary on the atmospheric temperature. So if you've got it, say, in a warm kitchen or laundry room, then the whole drying process will be a lot shorter than if you've got it, say, in an outhouse or in a conservatory that's really cold, then the whole drying time will take a huge amount longer. And personally, we do say to customers, and hopefully most, most retailers will say this, that if you're going to have a heat pump tumble dryer, say outside in a garage or, or even an old shed that, where there's no heating at all, personally, I wouldn't recommend it because you'll find that the whole drying time will take so long uh, that it's just not worth it. So I hope you found that a little bit useful or you picked up a little tip or two on how to reduce the cost when it comes to drying your clothes. Now, there are many, many ways, uh, many other tips. Uh, if you have got something, so if you've got something, uh, another method that you use to reduce either the time of your drying or the cost when it comes to drying your clothes, then just pop it in the comments because I'd always appreciate the, the feedback. As I said at the start of the video, I would appreciate it if you just give us a quick thumbs up on the video and also click subscribe. If you have any comments on the video, whether you enjoyed it, whether you didn't enjoy it, again, pop in the comments. And if you've got any questions, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.